take the right door on your way down. There's no telling where you'll end up. Can you make it through? To the night's end. Such a good girl. Such a pretty girl. All right. Now fetch the head. Ah, oh, you weren't supposed to eat it. But how can I resist you? Ah, it's you, friend. No, Josephine, this is our friend. Josie. Good girl. This is one of my hounds. Don't be afraid of her size. She's really just a sweetheart. Now, to business. I think you'll enjoy this one. The Sand. Written by Deborah Sheldon. Joel stalked towards the rental car, loosening his tie. Stupid counsellors wouldn't recognise a gift horse if it bit him on the ass. He popped the boot, flung his briefcase inside and glared up and down Main Street. The place was a shithole anyway. Little Corella Bay, a beachside town named after a parrot that looked like a crappy, low-res version of the cockatoo. Little Corella Bay, an upcoming boom town according to management, Let's build a hotel while prices are cheap, they said. The local council will be a pushover, they said. Let's send Joel. He has to make his bones sooner or later, they said. Had management set him up for failure? Maybe. He wasn't a people person. Everyone in the office knew it. For his birthday last month, they had given him a coffee mug that read, Shut up and go away. He threw his tie into the boot, then his suit jacket. Sweat plastered his shirt to his back. Not even ten in the morning and already hot as hell. Car park overlooked the beach. People were sunbathing, walking dogs, splashing around in the water. Right, he would head for the sand. No point in calling his boss yet. He had to calm down, think of a way to massage the facts so he didn't sound like a complete and utter dickhead. The sand turned out to be the kind he liked best. Firm enough so his shoes didn't bog yet fine and white, soft as caster sugar. The water reflected the deep blue summer sky. You could imagine the postcard. The waves came in gently, shyly, in coy little ripples. No surf beach, sure, but perfect for swimmers, paddleboarders, families. Just the sorts of tourists who would want a good hotel. Ah, shit. The meeting with the council washed over him in all its various shades of humiliation, and he winced. What could he say to his boss? That he rubbed the councillors the wrong way from the start, before the introductions had even finished? Closer to the water, the breeze coming off Bad Strait riffled through Joel's hair. He stopped walking, sighed at the cool relief, and let his shoulders drop. This is what he needed. A bit of nature to stop his adrenal glands firing. He picked a relatively empty spot, sat down and hugged his knees. A young man in board shorts was throwing a stick into the ocean for his dog to retrieve. An excitable black Labrador that wouldn't stop barking. Joel glanced around the beach, frowning. Why weren't these people at work? It was a Thursday. Bludges. Then he remembered it was school holidays. The squealing of young kids caught his attention. Next to him, some two or three metres away, a couple of girls in frilly one-piece bathing suits were burying a man presumably their father, in the sand. They each had a plastic shovel. Joel didn't know much about kids, but they looked preschool, perhaps three or four years old. The dad caught Joel's eye and smiled. Joel lifted a corner of his mouth in response. It's like they want to get rid of me, the dad called. Yeah, sure, Joel said and looked back at the water. 
My dad said, Charlotte, put my hat over my eyes, would you? After a beat, he continued, Sienna, be a sweetheart. Put the hat over daddy's face. The sun's in my eyes. Then don't lie on your back and let your rug rats cover you in sand, Joel thought. Christ. If only he'd shaken that woman's hand. He'd shaken with everyone else, hadn't he? The old biddy must have been in charge. Come to think of it, she had been the first one to veto the hotel idea. We don't want to spoil the country feel of little Corella Bay, she had said. As if this shit all had anything to spoil. Except for the beach, Joel conceded. Yes, fair point. This beach was pretty damn good. The girl's squeals turned into full-throated screams. What the hell? The grave mound hump of sand that encased Daddy's prone body was sinking, flattening, as if the man was somehow disappearing. The girls dropped their spades and bawled. Joel scrambled over to the denim hat and lifted it. Nothing but sand. Where's Daddy? Trilled one of the girls. Joel gaped, stunned. The older girl, shrieking, began digging frantically with one of the plastic shovels. People sat up on their towels and looked over, curious, heads craning. Joel shoved his arm into the sand, pushing hard, trying to reach deeper and deeper, trying to find the dad's face. And when he was elbow deep into the soft and sugary sand, his fingers got caught in a cold, metallic nip. First, his little finger, then his ring finger. Quick as a wink. One, two. Like he'd reached into the cogs of a whirring machine. Yelping in pain, Joel wrenched out his arm. His little finger and ring finger were missing, sheared away clean as if pruned with bolt cutters. The pulsing of blood from the stumps made him swoon. Only the screams of the girls brought him back. He clamped his ruined hand beneath his armpit, hyperventilating. Sweet Mary and Joseph, shouted a querulous high-pitched voice. An elderly woman in a bikini and bathing cap was staring past Joel with frightened eyes. Screams came from behind him. He looked over his shoulder. People were dropping straight down into the sand. As fast as if they had stepped from land into deep water. Except for the spin, just before they disappeared. Somewhere around shoulder height, right before the sand engulfed their heads, they pirouetted at speed, whizzed by an invisible electric drill. Joel leapt to his feet and staggered backwards to the water squeezing his mutilated hand tighter under his armpit. What's going on? The elderly woman demanded, as if Joel had the answer. The girls cried and stamped their feet and dug for their father. Joel could see the bonnet of his rental car overlooking the beach. A teenage girl sank, followed by a distressed teenage boy. Both gone. Cries sounded from everywhere. Stumbling, Joel backed further away. Cold water swilled around his ankles, soaked into his brogues. The young man ran past him up the beach, the Labrador following and barking. People were snatching up children, scattering in panic. But the strange phenomenon had ceased. After about half a minute, where nobody disappeared, some of the beachgoers stopped rushing about, slowed down to quiz each other, to cross-check, questioning their own eyes and sanity as Joel was questioning his. The shrugs, the helpless gesturing. Is it over? Apparently so. Few people were still wailing, weeping, digging. The girls hadn't given up on their dad. Faces bright red and contorted, with hysterical sobbing. They hacked away at the sand with their plastic shovels, tossing a few teaspoons worth of grains with every thrust. Dazed, Joel blinked, surveying the beach, heart knocking in his throat. What the hell had just happened? Quicksand. But wasn't that a myth? Quicksand, the devouring slurry in old Hollywood movies, didn't exist, right? And even if it did exist, this beach wasn't sodden. This sand was dry. And for Christ's sake, what had taken his fingers? The pain made his eyes water. Some people fled to the car park. Those of the do-gooder persuasion hurried back to comfort the distraught or help them to dig. Joel stood immobilised, like so many others. He felt the sound before he heard it. 
a slow, subsonic rumble that vibrated his bone marrow. Everyone else must have felt it too. Like frightened meerkats, they stopped whatever they were doing and straightened up. Heads swiveling this way and that. Eyes bugged, mouths agape. Oh shit, Joel thought as his heart clamoured harder in fresh alarm. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Can you hear that? The elderly woman said to him. What is it? A truck? The thundering bass notes seemed to be coming from every direction now, rising in volume like an oncoming freight train. The ground began to shiver. Earthquake. A catastrophic shifting of tectonic plates, a force strong enough to flatten cities. That would explain everything. People had fallen through cracks opening in the earth. But his fingers? The noise ground on and on, getting louder. No, wait, not an earthquake. Other sounds emerged from the rumble. Great drawn out creaks and groans, as if a giant mechanical clockwork were meshing its rusted gears together for the first time in eons. The ground rocked beneath his feet. The entire beach rose and fell like a wave. From car park to waterline, people started screaming again and sprinting for Main Street. Gone. Another person, then another, plummeting as if through trapdoors in the sand. A few good Samaritans came rushing from Main Street, attracted by the commotion. Go back, Jal yelled, hard enough to strip his throat raw. Go back! They blundered onto the beach anyway. How could they hear him over the deafening shudder and interlocking and grinding cogs? Gone. Gone. Help me. The elderly woman gasped, clutching at Joel's arm. Get me out of here. He shook her off. It was a pattern now. Oh shit. A pattern mimicking the initial wave in the sand. People were disappearing in neat rows from the car park towards the water. The trapdoors ran in one direction and then doubled back to run in the other. People dropping like dominoes, vanishing in a puff of white and sugary sand. The screech of the underground cogs hurt his eardrums. There was a sudden odour of blood, shit, vomit, rotting flesh, burnt hair, vinegar. The elderly woman wrenched at his arm. He shook her off again. You bastard, she howled. You selfish, vile bastard. Tottering and staggering, she headed for the car park. The two girls were desperately flailing at the sand for their long gone father. A few metres past them, the elderly woman plunged straight down into the beach. Gone. Joel had to escape. Had to get into the water. Girls, he cried, trying to remember their names and failing. Come with me right now. Right now. Hurry. We have to swim for it. Let's go. What about Daddy? Hiccuped the older one. We have to find Daddy. The puffs of sand tufted closer. For Christ's sake, get in the goddamn water, he shouted, reaching out both arms. The girls recoiled and shrieked as blood dripped from his finger stumps. Ah, oh, shit. In his terror, he had forgotten about that. Forgotten that the teeth under the sand had maimed him. Hurry, he implored. But the girls shrank against each other and redoubled their screams. Gone. Both of them swallowed in one gulp. The last thing he saw, the whirling, swirling whip of their long blonde hair. Loping in clumsy strides, gasping and whimpering, Joel waded into the ocean. Behind him, the beach rasped and shuddered. Cool water pulled at his trousers, stung his wounds, closed over his head. Thrashing, he lifted his face to the air and furiously dog paddled. The last time he'd been in water deeper than a bathtub, God damn it, was primary school. Forced to participate in swimming lessons, Mum had insisted. Oh, how he loathed those lessons. Hated the sensation of nothing beneath his feet. The feeling that the pool bottom wasn't there at all. That he was struggling on the surface while a yawning chasm lay beneath, waiting to snap him up. It's like a fear of heights, he had tried to explain to Mum. A fear of dying, of falling through the void. Mum's voice, 
See, it's okay. You're floating, sweetie. Just relax. Relax in the water. Relax? No. Never. How? The bottom was too far away. He kicked off his brogues. How heavy were wet clothes? His trousers might drown him. Panting, puffing, he stopped dog paddling long enough to undo his belt. Let it go. Discard his wallet, phone, keys. He slogged through the water. The swells kept lapping into his mouth. Where am I going? Thought. Where the hell do I think I'm going? About 500 kilometres of rough seas lay between the Bass Coast and the island of Tasmania. Bass Strait was capricious, full of tidal waves and storms that overturned and ate ships. All right, so he would swim parallel to the beach, find some place else to make landing. And if the whole coastline had become a giant mechanical lathe? Well, he would just keep on swimming until he came across a boat. It must be fishermen, or snorkelers, divers, sightseers. Jesus, it must be a boat out here. At least one. Where were all the boats? <coughs> he coughed, spluttered, his face sitting lower and lower in the water. God, it was tiring already. The waves, deceptively small, were so hard to fight. Warm blood trailed from his hand. Sharks. His blood would attract sharks. He tried to hold his ruined hand above his head and couldn't swim with only one arm. Now what? The options seemed limited. Get eaten by sharks? Drown? Bleed to death? Return to shore and be killed by a meat grinder? He treaded water, looked back. The beach was empty. Empty? Really? Nobody? Not a living soul. Was it the same stretch of beach? Yes. There was his rental car, a violent shade of orange. Holy Christ, was it over? Was the carnage done? Spitting, burping, <coughs> panting. <coughs> he contemplated swimming back. He certainly couldn't stay out here forever, waiting for non-existent boats. The rumbling sounded again. So it wasn't over. The breeze must be carrying the noise from the beach. No going back. He struck out, dog paddling parallel to the coast. The breeze fell away, but somehow the rumbling got louder. It didn't make sense. Around him, waves began to stipple and shiver, concussed by rising decibels. Panic tasted sour. The machinery was coming for him. Clockwork gears meshing along the seabed in pursuit. Joel turned and swam towards Bass Strait. Was he making any headway? The grinding noises roared in his ears. Beneath him, the water began to draw like an unplugged bath. Gently at first, then as a persistent suction that held his feet and tried to pull them down. Trap doors were opening, stretching wider. He paddled as fast as he could. The noise became unbearable. Putting his face in the water, screwing his eyes shut, he commenced a clumsy freestyle crawl. His primary school swim coach came to mind. Use your hands like oars, Joel, and row, row, row. But one oar was broken. Broken, maimed and bleeding, pumping blood into the deep water, luring sharks. One day, Joel, you might have to swim for your life. Practice, boy, try your best. The suction got stronger. Joel worked his arms and legs in desperation. His head came up and he glanced around. The beach was lost from sight. Nothing but sky and waves. He stopped, waited for his life to flash before his eyes. It didn't happen. Instead, he remembered the banality of the coffee mug. Shut up and go away. Seawater formed a whirlpool around him concentric ripples starting to turn faster and faster. Soon, the vacuum beneath would be strong enough to pull him under. He would be dragged to the seabed and sucked through a trapdoor. Any moment now, the giant clockwork gears would grind him up, 
starting with his toes. How much would it hurt? How quickly would he die? The suction increased. He struggled to keep his head above water. Struggled and failed. Any moment now, he kicked hard. The water slurped and wrapped tight as a wet call around his body. He couldn't move his limbs. He glimpsed to the sky and then it was gone. The Sand was written by Deborah Sheldon and was first published in Beside the Seaside, Tales from the Day Tripper. Deborah is an award-winning author that writes short stories, novellas and novels across the darkest spectrum of horror, crime and noir. Visit her at debrasheldon.wordpress.com And lastly, we currently have a competition going to win a signed copy of Robert P. Atone's new anthology, Her Infernal Name and Other Nightmares. For your chance to win, please leave a review for the podcast either on Apple Podcasts or at www.podchaser.com. Link is in the description. We hope you've enjoyed the episode. Stay horrific, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>